So for those of you who don't know, Elizabeth Holmes was like, here, Elizabeth Holmes is a person who uh, never really invented anything. You know, we, we've watched actually early, it was a long time ago, but on this stream, we actually watched a short documentary about Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes started gained an incredible amount of venture capital promising needleless blood drawing technology okay needleless blood drawing technology and i want you to think about that for a second and go hmm does that mean it makes an incision no does that mean that it uses like extremely painful suction like a leech how does it work well no see that was a secret that was that was a secret. Nobody knew exactly how her method intended to get blood out of the body, but it was needleless. See? And she promised this and hyped it up to all kinds of people saying, here's what we need. This, uh, yeah, her claim was that you could run a full spectrum of blood tests off of a single drop of blood. Now, keep in mind that when she started promising this, this technology literally had not been invented, okay? The technology was not yet invented. She promised that she could have it invented for a lot of money. If people gave her lots and lots and lots of money, you could give a single drop of blood and you would be able to have a full spectrum blood test. Now, if this sounds magical and fantastical to you, you might be correct. If it sounds like somebody running a massive grift and making fuckloads of money, like a decade plus of living the high life, then correct. You are, you would be, you would be correct. It is magical. It does sound like somebody running a grift. And as it turns out, we now have confirmation that indeed it was a grift. Elizabeth Holmes found guilty on four out of 11 federal charges of fraud. The jury in the criminal trial of Elizabeth Holmes, the former CEO and founder of Theranos, has reached a verdict. Holmes was found guilty on four charges, three counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. The jury returned no verdict on the three counts of wired of, uh, on three counts three other counts of wire fraud. She was found not guilty on three additional charges of wire fraud and one additional charge of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. L Holmes faces up to 20 years in prison as well as a fine of $250,000 plus restitution for each count of, wild of wire fraud and each conspiracy count. Now, the 20 years in prison is what hurts for somebody like Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes made billions of dollars. So 25 $250,000 in restitution is basically pocket change for somebody who grifted billions, billions of dollars, okay? So, but 20 years in prison, you know, it'll be a cushy prison because she's a white collar criminal, but yeah. Wait, wait, 20 years per charge? Oh my God, 20 years per charge. Okay, so yeah, she might end up in prison for life. Yikes. Now that hurts. This little cash thing is what she's going to be fighting for, but that hurts. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Holmes, who had claimed to revolutionize to have revolutionized blood testing, faced nine counts of federal wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud over allegations she in intentionally lied to investors, doctors, and patients about her company's blood testing capabilities to take their money and prop up her company. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, you might be thinking, oh, was this grifting insurance companies? Yes. Was this grift grifting medical investors? Yes. Was this also grifting literal medical patients who had life important things? that they trusted her company, which appeared to be entirely legitimate? Yes, she did. She did also grift patients who needed life-saving procedures and trusted her firm 
which has been propped up by a million interlocking endorsements from other billion dollar companies, leading to it being basically impossible for the average everyday person to know when they're being grifted or not by medical professionals. There's like eight levels in which this is fucked. And it is so emblematic of our time. This happens over and over and over again. These big savior investor types who who walk in with with the with the sort of like uh, Steve Jobs swagger, and they want to go like, "Yes, I'm the newest visionary inventor. I did le I did LSD in the mountains once and had a vision about how technology is actually supposed to help people." That type of person, you know, the ones that we just watched an entire Amon animations video about. Yeah, Elizabeth Holmes is basically the perfect poster child of that type of person, of the tech grifter who has nothing, offers magical solutions that give hope to people who are desperately suffering in a financial system and then end up grifting everyone. And the people who get hurt the most are the ones who actually just need their fucking health care taken care of. So, whew, something we all got to be, if you wonder why I'm very distrustful of like techie investor types, it's because they're a dime a dozen. Every techie investor guy is a salesperson first, okay? Understand that and listen closely, imps. You understand? Whenever you hear some guy coming forward, pro proffering to you the solution to climate change, the solution to inconvenient blood draws, think twice. Because 90% of the time, it's a salesperson, financier, and a bunch of financier friends that are trying to make a quick buck before anybody can catch them and hope that they can get away with it. Because a lot of people have. A fucking lot of people have. So she literally made up medical technology to Elon Musk her way into money. Yes. Yes. In fact, no, you know what? Let's just watch it. Let's just watch this. This is a real good time to do this. Let me show you this. This is a little short video. The, the Cold Fusion Theranos documentary. We're going to watch this together. Okay? And keep in mind, this video came out in early 2019. Which is also when I originally watched it. And then... I've watched it on here in 2020, and now we're in 2022 watching it again. So let's let's listen up, everybody. Let's fucking listen up, shall we? Theranos and don't forget to like the stream. A startup of almost mythical proportions and goals in 2003. It's just an incredible morality tale. A woman once hailed as a Silicon Valley visionary is facing federal fraud charges tonight. Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes has now officially been indicted on federal wire fraud uh -oh. charges. The U.S. Attorney's Office accusing her of engaging... Imagine building a company that everyone thought would change the world, but ended up being one of the biggest frauds in history. Theranos, the company started in 2003 by Stanford dropout Elizabeth Holmes, was just that. They fooled everyone, receiving over $600 million of funding in the process. What Theranos promised was a revolutionary blood analyzer that could run hundreds of tests just from a finger prick in the comfort of your own home. However, this story isn't one of great success or inspiration. This story is about deceit, fraud, manipulation, and a CEO who would stop at nothing to get her goal. This is the story of Theranos, a company once worth $9 billion, and the story of how it all came crashing down in one of the worst disasters in Silicon Valley history. What exactly was Theranos? And how did it go so horribly wrong? Oh, somebody in chat says, I love how it's still called wire fraud like it's happening over telegrams. It's called wire fraud because any type of, of fraud that involves the use of mass telecommunications is considered wire fraud. It is a bit of an outdated term, but it also refers to internet scams. It refers to investment scams that take place largely on the internet, uh, telephone scams, things like that. Her bullshitting capabilities are unbelievably epic. The, the, ther, the, okay, Elizabeth Holmes is like a god to salespeople, you understand. Except not anymore because she got caught. Once you get caught, you can't be a god anymore. You can be learned from, but you become like a failed hero. But just so you know. Just, just so you know. Like, salespeople worship uh, Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, they'll get into this capo, but I'll just read this. 
off bat because I think this is a really good comment. From Capo in chat. Not that it makes it not fraud, but this is also an important lesson in how bullshit the stock market and company valuation actually is. Her company had a value of billions based on nothing but the imaginations of the people investing. Yes, that's why sales rules capitalism. Because if you can convince people that it's worth something, then you can make a lot of money even if it's worth nothing. Sunny immigrated from Pakistan and had some success in the dot-com boom of 1999, pocketing $40 million in the process. He had what she wanted, money and the status of a successful entrepreneur. Sunny would later play a big role in Elizabeth's company. During another trip to Asia, Elizabeth witnessed the SARS outbreak. From that point, she came home determined to change the world. Upon returning home, she didn't leave her room for five days and slept two hours a night while working on a patent idea. True, Eric Coffey. Uh, Elizabeth, for those who've played Dark Souls 3, Elizabeth Holmes is unkindled ash for salespeople. Unironically, yes. Like an ancient soul that failed to relink the fire or got burnt up in the process of it. The idea was to create a wearable patch which could continually test the blood of the wearer and admit the right dose of medicine in real time. Jesus. Filled with determination, she dropped out of Stanford at age 19 and started her own company. The early days were not glamorous. The office of the new company was in a part of town known for shootings. One day while in her car, Elizabeth was shot at with the bullet just narrowly missing her. Despite this, she received a $1 million seed investment from her old neighbor who had made some money investing in Hotmail. Early on, Elizabeth wrote on the reputation of her investors. So that's all you need everybody. If you want to become a successful capitalist grifter, all you need is $1 million. What? Just one million dollars. That's it. Just one million dollars. If you can come up, if somebody can just gift you one million dollars. By the way, if there's anyone in chat who wants to offer me one million dollars, uh, let's talk. DM me. Uh, I could do a lot with one million dollars. I could, I could have a house and 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 stream with a big room and and have reliable internet. So you know, if you got a million dollars sitting around, please let's talk. Uh, subscribe to Demon Mama and come talk to me. I'll we'll work it out in detail. Okay, let's go. However, when it came to investors that specialized in medicine, she struggled to convince them as Fuck the lack yeah, of knowledge Capo. started showing. It wasn't a surprise because what she What about a long-term loan of a million dollars? If it's like a Tom Nook style one where I don't where I might not have to pay it back if I make the town nice enough, um agreed. But if it's not like a Tom Nook one, uh well, actually maybe we'll still talk. Depending on the term of the loan, if it's like can we get like an 80-year term? I'll 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 pay you back. I'll pay you back in the next 80 years only spent a few semesters at university. So for most tech entrepreneurs, this kind of thing isn't a big- uh, excuse me? I need to finish this video. If I see anyone saying Tom Nook is Tom Crook, I will ban you. Ask a Ashen one, you get away one time. Don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. I'll watch the Tom Nook analysis video. Tom Nook's a good boy. I stand Tom Nook. Big issue. For example, Mark Zuckerberg only needed to master coding as a child, and he could have struck it big with little university knowledge. On the other hand, medicine and chemistry are fields that require decades of knowledge and research to find a breakthrough. Regardless, by the end of the year, Elizabeth had nearly $6 million in funding and her Holy idea had fuck. changed. Now, the blood testing would be done by a cartridge and reader system. Shut Here's up. how it was supposed to work. Patients would prick their fingers, storing blood in a small cartridge. Shut up, pretend. Pushing minutes. this cartridge into a machine would run the tests. The Theranos machines just and kidding, Vision would perform tests on the spot and beam information via the internet to a lab where personnel would interpret the results and send a report back. Traditionally, the current industry procedure Ooh. was to draw Ooh. a syringe full Owie. of blood from a vein and physically send the sample to a lab. Sorry, but uh, needles, needles are kind of cool, okay? I used to be really scared of needles. I'm not scared of needles anymore. They're cool as fuck, okay? Needles are really sick. I fucking love needles. Oh, you fucking don't. You used to cry. You've gotten oh. stronger, but you used to cry. When I was a baby? No, like last month. No. Like last month, Fawn. No. Yeah, like last fucking month. I'm being I don't care. The old way used large machines the size of several business photocopiers, and the results would take a few days to get back from a doctor. Imagine being scared of needles after you split your tongue in half. Uh, oh, I gotta tell the story. Oh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna tell the story. Okay, I'm gonna write down that I'm gonna tell the story after this, of, ge of, of getting the suture taken out of my tongue. You all deserve to hear that. That shit, that shit was crazy. I'm going to tell you about it. But I'll give you a CW. Okay, let's continue. 
Theranos would try to scale down the components of these massive machines to fit into a box the size of a personal computer. Theranos was going to make this process faster, more comfortable, and completely bypass the need for a doctor. In this particular medical field, there are many components that are used to test blood, each of which performs a different type of test. For example, one test shoots a beam of light into the sample blood and measures the light reflected, while other tests require chemical reactions. HGB now, guy, thank you so much for the, the tier one sub, Theranos. thank you! There were several issues that made the Theranos machine nearly impossible. Spyro gal, I will answer your question after this video. I'll put it in the list to answer after this video. Here we go. This is gonna be a fun night. I can tell, this is gonna be a chill night. Firstly, the components would interfere with each other when placed in close proximity due to a magnitude of problems including heat, light, and electrical activity. Next, to have sufficient volume of test samples from only a pinprick on a finger, the drops of blood had to be diluted. Over-diluted samples gave inaccurate results and was outside the detection capability of the hardware. So in short, for the technology to be possible, Theranos had to make major breakthroughs on all fronts of blood analysis. They had to do all of this while only reporting to Elizabeth, who didn't really have the knowledge. Uh -oh. Skipping forward to 2006, uh -oh. hey, Theranos had some momentum and a prototype called the Theranos 1.0. Elizabeth right, enlisted up, we'll back. engineers to design a new version called Watch. the Edison. Watch. However, no Theranos machine would ever be accurate or capable of performing the full range of tests that Elizabeth claimed. Elizabeth started to push the engineering team manager to make the Edison development run 24-7. When the manager refused, stating that the engineers were overworked as it is, Elizabeth hired a parallel engineering team and pitted the two teams against each other in a survival of the fittest race. This kind of thing was actually a tactic that Steve Jobs also used with the original Mac and the iPhone. But in Theranos' case, the losing team would be fired. Elizabeth also started doing some ethically questionable things, such as running a pilot test on cancer patients with the company Pfizer. She knew the product didn't work yet, but insisted on running real tests on people that had serious illnesses. To highlight how serious this was, blood tests are usually used to increase or decrease a patient's dosage of medication or diagnose conditions which may require immediate action. Doctors use lab results to base 70% of their decisions on. If the results are false, it could be fatal. Of course, the only reason the cancer trials went ahead is that Elizabeth had been outright lying to investors and clients about how well the product actually worked. The same year, the company's CFO discovered that Elizabeth had been lying. He told her to stop. Instead of agreeing, she fired him on the spot. After this, Elizabeth never hired another chief financial officer again, leaving the position vacant for a decade. In 2007, there was no bigger Silicon I'm Valley sure. star than Steve Jobs. Elizabeth had started developing an obsession for Jobs. An employee Yikes. even found what a newspaper say? cutout on her what desk where say? someone called her the next Steve Jobs. The obsession bordered on insanity. For example, after she found out that Steve scheduled marketing meetings on Wednesdays, she would do the same with the same marketing firm that Steve used. She would even recruit a few Apple employees. One of this included one of Steve Jobs' oldest friends and the former senior vice president of software at Apple, A.V. Tavanian. He even went out of retirement to join the Theranos board. The board of Theranos mm, was made strange, up of a star-studded panel. Don Lucas, who mentored the founder of Oracle, was the chairman. One day, Elizabeth wanted to restructure the- For those of you who don't know, Oracle is one of the most evil tech companies in the world. Literally, you know what? Someday I should do a history mom on Oracle. Oracle is- the what is such an evil fucking tech company it's ridiculous just look up the wikipedia article and you'll understand exactly what i'm talking about there's so much there's no way i can talk about it here i should just talk about it it's fucking insane company shares which would give her majority voting rights ex-apple employee av who was on the board didn't think that this was a good idea and paired with the information that he'd received from employees about the problems during testing he felt like he had to do something he spoke with Don Lucas, the chairman, but this resulted in A.V. resigning after he felt that his advice fell on deaf ears. Elizabeth had the board wrapped around her finger. She was a master manipulator. She spoke in a low baritone voice in order to be taken more seriously. The, the question was, as a 19 year old, how do you go about the process of convincing people that you know what you're doing? It's about finding people who believe in you because the worst possible thing in the world is to have someone who doesn't believe in you backing you because that's not going to result in a good situation. 
On occasion, she forgot to put on the voice and was caught using a natural voice before realizing and dropping several tones. No, it hasn't. Well, if I use traditional words to describe what we're doing, it's hard because people then associate it with conventional processes for analyzing drugs and development. Shortly after the company moved to a prime location in Silicon Valley, a new member of the sales team soon found out that the financial projections were based off pilot tests that weren't uh, to honest. To a degree. The issue was brought- uh, To a degree, Fortuna, but like, I think that the voice thing is less about like, I mean, in her mind, it's certainly about manipulating people, right? Because she probably grew up hearing that like, oh yeah, in the tech world, you gotta be masculine and whatever. Did she drop her voice to sound less demure? I mean, there's a lot that you can, there's a lot that you could point to, but I think what we can tell is that, like, Elizabeth Holmes is a particularly, um, superstitious individual who is also nonetheless incredibly, incredibly good at working the, um, uh, at working the sort of people who are in, who are finan, who are like financially invest, who are like, uh, sorry, financial investors. Wow. I really stumbled on my words there. My apologies. Elizabeth Holmes, voice training or anything else, nonetheless, she was trying to create herself as the perfect image of the ideal tech entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, lots of women, I'm sure, do it. Of course, tons of people do it. I mean, we. I think sometimes it happens unintentionally. Sometimes it happens intentionally. It doesn't really matter to me. Like, the voice thing is the least thing uh, that, you sh that we should worry about. That's more of like a product of her own superstition than anything else. To the board who ran an emergency meeting and decided to fire Elizabeth. Two hours after they brought her in to tell her the decision, she had convinced them to reverse it. This incredible power of persuasion is another reason why Theranos went so far with no real working technology. Shortly after the meeting, Elizabeth fired those who raised the alarm. By this stage, employees leaving or being fired was common. In fact, all employees... Hmm, weird. Internal loyalty-based purges, huh? Employees who came from Apple would leave in just a couple of years. Around this time, an old family friend, Richard Fuers, created a patent for a method of transmitting information from blood testing machines to doctors. He did this out of revengeful spite for not being asked advice when Elizabeth started the company in his field of expertise. He was a doctor who sold his medical demonstration video company for $50 million. In a few years' time, Richard would go to court with Theranos over the patent he made, which in private he called the Theranos Killer. Richard's patents wouldn't go on to kill Theranos, but his actions would. Well, By 2009, Sonny, the millionaire Pakistani immigrant, was now Elizabeth's boyfriend and had joined the company as second in charge. Hmm. Sonny came from a software background and had little knowledge of the inner workings of a medical company. He no, claimed cycle. to have written 10 no, million lines of code while at Microsoft, but the average developer at Microsoft only writes a thousand lines a year. He also boasted of having extreme wealth and only coming to work because he wanted to. He also had a habit of latching onto buzzwords and using them despite little knowledge of the topic. Engineers would use terms out of context to see if we'd continue to use them. He did. But Oof. Sonny knew how to control people. He was feared- Oof. Oof. That's, that's evil. Now that's where- this is where where salespeople get owned. You have to be real careful. If you're trying to be a sales grifter, be careful cuz engineers and experts will do this to you. They'll tell you they'll tell you terms to see if you pick it up and start using it. Yeah, it's bad. It's an easy way to expose somebody as a grifter. Reminds me of some people, uh, reminds me of a of a debate. There was a debate recently where someone used a term like woke blanchardism, which was exactly that. Like it's one of those terms that shows you don't know anything about what you're talking about. Yeah. Within the company, he constantly fired people and let his tempers flare. 2010 saw a whole lot of money pouring into Silicon Valley. Facebook, Twitter and Uber were all taking off. Meanwhile, Walgreens and Safeway had both entered talks with Theranos to partner and create wellness centers. These were sections in their stores where patients could get blood tests. Theranos. You may have seen some of these. You may have literally seen some of these things start going up. Uh, a lot of stores, even my local Safeway, has a little room that is not used. They built a little room specifically for doing blood tests, and it's never used. A lot of people's stores will have those little wellness centers, and a lot of them are simply not used at all. Because 
You'll understand in a minute. Okay, thank presented you. Walgreens with 192 different tests that could be performed by their Edison machine. However, only about half of them were even theoretically possible. The only proof that the technology worked was a review from John Hopkins Medical School. The document was only two pages long and summarized a meeting where Theranos showed the university representatives some data results. No actual testing was done on the machines themselves. But Theranos uh -oh. was hot stuff, and Walgreens had the fear of missing out and letting their competitors land a partnership. Uh oh. Elizabeth also made such an impression on the Walgreens and Safeway executives that they trusted every word she said. Combined, Safeway and Walgreens gave Theranos $105 million in investment and loans. $105 million. That's more money than any of you can even think of. Around this time, Elizabeth realized that the Edison wasn't good enough, so she commissioned the Minilab, the third iteration of the blood testing product. Meanwhile, Sunny intimidated employees and watched CCTV footage of them to see exactly how long people were working. One time, he told an employee that he would quote, fix him, after finding that he'd only worked eight hours per day. Elizabeth backed up the decision, what stating the to fuck? employees that, quote, if anyone here believes that you are not working on the best thing humans have ever built, or if you're cynical, then you should leave, end quote. Basically, anyone who agreed with Elizabeth got promoted, and those who doubted got fired. By 2012, Safeway wasn't doing well. They had poured $350 million into renovations of store space across their store locations in anticipation for the therapy. If you have a local imps, those of you who are listening right now, if you have a local Safeway, next time you go to Safeway, see if you can see any of the lounges they're talking about here. The little wellness lounges where people where it looks almost like a doctor's office and you're supposed to go in there to get your blood done. See if you can see any of those. And then and then ask yourself, is it open? Is it being used? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? $350 million into renovating stores based on promises from a multi-million dollar company called Theranos, which had no technology to back it. They had never built a working machine at the time that they got $350 million. They got Safeway to renovate all of their stores, to put their brand name all over everything, and they hadn't even invented the technology yet. Yeah, sometimes they'll use them to, get, to do flu shots or COVID shots, but they were built recently. Theranos machines. They were only met with constant launch delays and excuses. Exactly, Rumi Red. Exactly. When Theranos did start accepting Safeway employee samples, they were tested on existing commercial third-party machines in a uh -oh. lab. But Safeway was. Isn't that weird? They didn't even let Safeway know that they were using non-Theranos machines, and Theranos was just using other people's machines while collecting money for their high-tech bullshit lied to and given the impression that all of these tests were being performed on Theranos Edison machines. They weren't even running most of the tests on the Theranos devices, and most of the tests were being run on third-party machines. Did Ms. Holmes know at the time that Theranos could not do all those tests? She, yeah, she knew. Uh -oh. Meanwhile, Theranos' lawsuit from Richard, the jealous family friend and medical doctor, was in full swing. He was serious about taking Theranos down. He hired the same lawyer that worked on the deposition case of Bill Gates. And the cost? $1,000 an hour. A pivotal point for Theranos' downfall came with the subpoena of Ian Gibbons, who had led the chemistry team since 2005. In May of 2013, Ian was notified by Theranos that in just two days' time, he would be involved in Richard's trial. He feared that anything that he might say may put the company in jeopardy and expose the lies. Ian was miserable at Theranos and had just been demoted but feared that leaving as a 67-year-old would make it impossible for him to get another job. Which is the true, next it morning, would. Ian's wife, Rochelle, found him in the bathroom having overdosed on medication. He died a week later in hospital. Back at Theranos, in a display of the coldest heart, Elizabeth didn't return Rochelle's call about the death of her husband. Elizabeth informed only a small number of employees about Ian's passing and loosely mentioned hosting a service. This was never carried out. She seemed to have just brushed off Ian's death pretty casually. After spending $2 million on the case, Richard settled in a massive blow to his pride. This would fuel the fire in Richard that would eventually bring down Theranos. During this period, Theranos was still carrying out tests on third-party machines and desperately trying to get results. This included stacking six mini labs on top of each other to get a higher throughput of tests. The additional heat 
Do you hear what they're doing? This entire time, they're lying to a nation of healthcare providers, all of whom are all lying to their customers. You may have, without even knowing it, been grifted by Theranos. And you'll never know. You'll never know. It generated actually hindered the accuracy of tests further. But Theranos didn't have time to work on their technology. They had already promised their machines to the world, and they had a $140 million contract with Walgreens, which required them to launch by February 2013, uh -oh. and they were four months overdue. The lies continued. The financial forecasts that Sunny gave to investors were 10 times higher than the internal forecasts of the company. These numbers were completely fabricated as Theranos was operating without a CFO for the last seven years, ever since he was fired. Theranos's board, as always, was still stacked with high-profile reputable names, so no one doubted the company. This included former US Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, former director of US Office of Management and Budget. Isn't that a little on the nose? Well, it is. That's why she's going to prison, Gayfesh. But people get away from it all the time. Well, here's the thing. They may have been making applications. But the thing is, is that most investors never look that deep. See, here's the cycle. This is the cycle, okay? A salesperson convinces a bunch of people that it's really good. They bring on a bunch of friends who all who might be mutual friends. They convince those investors it's good. And then those investors, having invested their money, are then motivated to convince other people that everything is good. So what you build is you build a bunch of internal pressure where everybody we we watch this with the um we watch this with the old uh the the British the British crown scam. Yeah, it's similar to how a pyramid scheme works. You have to keep getting more and more people invested so that nobody backs out. And the people who do back out, well, they're just losers. And you have to frame them as losers. That's how these people do this shit. It's a confidence scam. That's why, you know, you ever heard of a con? Like a con job? That's called a confidence job. It's sold via confidence and via the confidence of others. Well, the wealthy usually, but the reason, see, that's the thing, Windleby. Windleby says, this is why you go after poor people. Once you start scamming the wealthy, you get really fucked. Yeah, but you can't get really rich without scamming the wealthy. The problem is the wealthy can absorb damage. They can take their time. They can take seven years to build a case with their lawyer, like the millionaire friend is doing here, because they have money. Anyway, let's continue. Let's keep watching this. This is really fucking good. Thank you all. George Schultz and future Secretary of Defense, Jim Mad Dog Mattis, had all joined the board. The company was very politically connected by this stage. Elizabeth we need a moderator in YouTube Clinton chat if possible. fundraiser for her 2016 campaign. Money just kept pouring in. Partner Fund put $94 million in shares. Rupert Murdoch chipped in $125 million. The Walmart Brothers put in $150 million. The DeVos family put in another $100 million. This gave Theranos a $9 billion valuation, and Elizabeth was worth $5 billion alone. The shortcomings of the technology were what? well known within the company, but employees- How is, what is, what does that mean? Worth $5 billion alone. What does that mean? What does that worth mean? Do you understand how these terms are super slippery? What does that mean? What does the worth mean? Nothing. It means nothing. It means people are confident that she is doing something worth $5 billion, but there's so many people throwing money into that valuation. There's no, it's almost impossible to verify it. Employees were usually too scared to do anything, fearing retaliation from Sonny, Elizabeth, or the company's lawyers. Thank employees you, Vermin. were forced Thank to you. sign confidentiality agreements when they started, and again, when they left. This stopped a lot of people from taking action. Tyler Schultz, grandson of the board member, George Schultz, was in a more privileged position. He Thank noticed you. the issues at Theranos, and after falling on Sonny and Elizabeth's deaf ears, he quit. Might need to be replaced. He tried to talk to his grandfather. He told George about the Edison's inaccuracy and the constant failing of quality control tests. He told uh -oh. him about how Theranos had duped everyone by testing samples on existing third-party commercial machines and not Theranos' own Edison machines. Incredibly, Elizabeth had put such a spell on George Schultz that he would disregard everything his grandson Tyler told him. 
In mid-2014, Fortune magazine released a front page story Yay, titled, thank you. This thank CEO you. is out for blood. This rockets Elizabeth to celebrity status, and from this point, she is constantly making media appearances. Forbes, USA Today, NPR, Fox Business, CNBC, CNN, and CBS News all took their turn to cover the success story of the youngest ever self-made female billionaire. Barack Obama made Elizabeth the US ambassador for global entrepreneurship, and she was added to the board of fellows at Harvard. Based on nothing. Barack Obama. Based on nothing. Harvard Medical School. Elizabeth enjoyed the fame. She grew her security team to 20. Her office was redesigned to look like the president's oval office, complete with bulletproof glass. Elizabeth spoke on a TED talk about her idea to change the world. She said, soon no one would have to say goodbye what? too soon, and went on to tell the audience of a heartfelt story about how her uncle had passed away from cancer. But of course, the TED talk was merely an act. In reality, she wasn't even close to her uncle and had just exploited his death for her narrative. Meanwhile, cracks were beginning to crumble the empire. Richard, a lot of people by this did stage, had created a, a gang of Theranos did. skeptics, including Ian's widow, Rochelle. They collected information and then took it to John Kerryru at the Wall Street Journal. As John began investigating, countless sources and former employees came out of the woodwork. They anonymously provided information about the story. Theranos attacked everyone who was talking. They used their pile of money and they threatened to sue everyone else who spoke to the Wall Street Journal. They even hired private investigators to stalk anyone they suspected. Several letters were sent to the Wall Street Journal to try and kill the story, threatening defamation lawsuits. Rupert Murdoch, the owner of the Wall Street Journal and investor in Theranos, was asked by Elizabeth to personally kill the story. He refused, stating that he had confidence in the editors to handle the truth, whatever it may be. The reaction from Theranos was intense, and the story wasn't even out yet. Business as usual continued at Theranos. Elizabeth was making White House appearances often then, but under the veneer, the machines could still only do a small number of tests and were inaccurate with even just those. Theranos continued to demonstrate the minilab for VIP guests. They pricked their finger, then waited until they left, and then went on to use existing <laughs> yeah, okay, commercial third-party lab machines yeah, to return the results. Always be girl bossing. Vice President Joe Biden even paid Theranos a visit. He was shown a fake lab that was set up just for the visit. He was impressed, saying that it was the lab of the future. A fake lab? No. Oh. Oh my God. Future and praised Theranos. The dark truth about Theranos was finally unveiled in the Wall Street Journal article of October 15th, 2015. HGB it was a bombshell. So All the major news articles the picked tier it up. One sub, thank People you. began questioning Theranos and its secrecy. Elizabeth took it all in her stride, not shying away from the questions, but instead outright lying to the public. It appeared that she thought everyone would just believe her again, but this time it was different. Now people were asking serious questions. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And just this morning, the Wall Street Journal ran a pretty scathing article about the company, alleging that the company's proprietary testing devices may be inaccurate and basically accusing Theranos of deceptive practices. To Elizabeth Holmes, the founder and CEO of Theranos, to give her a chance to answer the charges raised in the article. Ms. Holmes, welcome back to Mad Money. It's great to be here, thank you. What do you think's going on? Oh yeah, we're gonna invite the suspect of a murder case on to defend themselves on the news. And none of the people, none of the thousands and millions of people who've been script, who have been uh, grifted. Isn't that fucking stupid? Isn't that fucking stupid? And people just eat this shit up. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you. And then all of a sudden you change the world. And um, I, I have to say, I, I, I personally was shocked to see that the journal would publish something like this. Just as the story had been published, the FDA made a surprise inspection at Theranos. In further uh -oh. investigations, it was found that the Theranos Edison blood testing machine only performed 12 out of 250 tests, and even those produced wildly erratic results. Now, Theranos was in full damage control. Elizabeth broke up with Sonny and fired him. A criminal investigation was underway, and a probe by the Securities and Exchange Commission was also proceeding. The investors began suing Theranos one by one. Partner Fund sued for 100 million, Walgreens for 140 million, Elizabeth had to close the trial lab and had to pay $4.5 million to Arizona State, 
where most patients had received testing. Theranos. How long did it take to find this out? Uh, wait, how did it take this long to find out? It always does. Corporations have millions of dollars that they can play delay games with. This is why you can't just believe the words of corporations or the CEOs of those corporations. If you don't think this is going to happen to Amazon, to Tesla, or already has, which it already has, okay? If you don't think it's going to happen, it already has, and it's going to again. Also, yes. Here's a, here's a classic from 2015, right before all this, right as this was all going down. Happy birthday to the late L Margaret Thatcher, Iron Sisters. You may have to fight a battle more than once to win it. Yeah had voided nearly a million lab results. Ten patients would sue Theranos for medical battery. But shockingly, of their cars, amongst yeah. all of this, Elizabeth never apologized. It seemed to her merely a mistake along the way which could be fixed. So Elizabeth and Sonny both knew what they were doing. Lying to investors, their clients, the regulators, patients, yeah. and even their own board. No one outside can be blamed for not realizing the fraud ahead of time. Even the board made up of seasoned... That's not true. See, that's where I disagree with this. That's not true. Everyone outside cannot be not blamed. This is how it always ends up happening. You, you, you push off the responsibility to somebody else. Oh, it's their fault for grifting. But in reality, all of these companies didn't do their due diligence. They were all just looking to rapidly make a lot of money professionals was masterfully manipulated into giving Elizabeth 99.7% of the voting rights. She seemed, by all accounts, a sociopath, willing to stop at nothing to make her company a success, not caring who or what got in her way, and who knows how far the lie could have gone. She continued with all smiles and lies even after the truth came out. Elizabeth's actions could be a microcosm, a case for a modern problem in society where the need to be successful, or at least appear successful, outweighs everything else. There's possibly another fault at play here, a fault in the human condition. It's the illusionary effect where if you repeat a lie enough times, people start to believe it, especially if you have credible names surrounding the product. The That's SEC the settled with Elizabeth Holmes. What, what he just described there is called, is not a, it's not a flaw with the human condition. It's called a con. It's how you lie. Lying is something that some humans do. This is why you have to apply skepticism and you can't buy into magical thinking. March of 2018, she lost voting control, had to give away her portion of the stock and was banned from being an officer or director of any public company for 10 years. Sonny still hasn't reached a settlement with the SEC. Both Sonny and Elizabeth have been indicted on criminal charges in an ongoing lawsuit at the time of this video. They have both pleaded not guilty and each faced 20 years in prison. Theranos was dissolved in September 2018. Could be, Gayfesh, could be. Could be. I wouldn't so put it So one question there. remains. If Theranos was to keep going, would they have made it? Would their blood testing machinery no. ever have worked? Well, actually, it's a harder question to answer than one might think. When they were running out of money, they tested on real patients as a proof of concept to gain more funding, which is of course what brought them down in the first place. But say they did get funding without testing on patients. The unveiled mini lab was only incrementally better than the Edison machine, even though Theranos had hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal. So with that being said, it's pretty unlikely that any company That's would have succeeded at So that wraps up our look at Theranos. So I know that would have lost some of the faith in humanity that you had, but if you want to see some real actual breakthroughs in research in the medical field, things such as real life nanobots being used in cancer with success in mice trials, or stem cells being injected directly into the brains of stroke victims, allowing for recovery as never seen before, and even enabling a wheelchair bound man to walk again. This is the kind of cool stuff that gets lost in the sea of media day to day. But you can find those videos right here on Cold Fusion. I'll leave a link in the description below. Go check out Cold Fusion. I'm going to link this video since, you know, whenever, whenever we whenever we watch a video on stream and react to a video on stream, I link their channel in the video that we watched. Cold Fusion does sick-ass stuff. I don't agree with all the takeaways, keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> but yes, she was found guilty today of wire fraud on, uh, what was it? How many counts? Four? Three counts of, wild, of, of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. It looks like uh, 
about 80 years in prison could be waiting for Elizabeth Holmes as of today. Convicted. They haven't decided on the sentence yet, but convicted. Yeah, as of today. That's why we're talking about this. And uh, I am still preparing a, a segment that I want to do sometime here in the future where I talk about sales tactics that you should watch out for. A practical, everyday person's guide to becoming more skeptical of capitalist st sales tactics. The video said she faces 20 years. That video is two years old. This is the news from today. From today, 20 years of prison on each count of fraud. Four, three counts of fraud, one of conspiracy. Each one bears up to 20 years in prison. So we'll see. We'll see. She's definitely getting some prison time. Yeah, she'll probably work it down. It'll probably be less, but still, that's still quite a lot. Prison time is what you never want to get. If you're if you're a financial scammer, you never want to get that prison time. It says Holmes faces up to 20 years in prison as well as a fine of 250 plus restitution for each count of wire fraud. So I don't know. It's hard to say. It might be a rich people prison, but hey, prison is no prison is good. Do you understand that, right? Do you think she can still make the Edison machine work, though? Oh, oh, yeah, totally. The magic machine that no other scientist agreed was possible. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's 20 years total. Still, 20 years in prison is a fucking long-ass time, guys. Prison ain't fun, okay? All right? That being arrested and charged for fraud doesn't look so great on a resume. Might fuck you up. But again, she comes from a rich family. She has fuckloads of money squirreled away. Some of it's not going to be taken. So if she ever makes out of prison, she'll be fine. But you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true panic stasis. Also, at sentencing, the judge is going to take into consideration that she's a new mother. Of course, of course. I think she can make that machine work as well as the cure for autism did. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, y'all know that 20 years is upwards of half of most of the people's watching this lifetimes. It's more than half of my lifetime, the person making it. It's most of people who are watching this realistically's lifetime, entire lifetime. She was found guilty on four of 11. She has a baby with the partner she met at Burning Man because of course, well, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It's just uh, sad, the state. I mean, just think about it. Think of how many people were ultimately affected by that without ever even being able to know it just because of how interlocked all of these fucking things are. Yeah. Yeah. Society is way too bloodthirsty when it comes to prison sentences. Um, I'm, I don't like prison. I think prison is bad, but like, like, I think prison is horrible, but like, we have to acknowledge that like, we recognize people get that much time for selling marijuana, for selling weed, people get way more than that time. Like, and this person like grifted the medical history of, I mean, the medical, I mean, oh God, there's so much. Not only tested on, on, on patients, uh, lied to patients, lied to the people who were, who were, uh, serving a ton, a fuckload of patients, lied to the U S government, literally created a fake lab uh, to continue the grift. Yeah, it's bad. So like, and so she might get like some money charges. You know, she's probably gonna have to pay a lot of money for the rest of her life. Valued at six, she's valued, was valued at $5 billion. Probably still has a whole lot of that. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think there's much to be, like, I don't think there's much to be gained talking about prison or anything here in this particular circumstance. The Martha Stewart prison? Yeah, yeah, yeah. White collar prisons. Everybody knows about that shit. Yeah. It's one of the few crimes worthy of imprisonment. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I think we could have a conversation about that, but honestly, I don't really feel like having a conversation about prison abolition at this current moment. I think what we can talk about, though, is that uh, it took, like, what? When did When was Theranos started? Let's take a look. Let's look up Theranos. Theranos was started in 2003, and it is now 2022. So from 2003 to 2022, Elizabeth Holmes was ripping people off to varying degrees for almost 20 years.
it was it ended in 2018 was when the indictments began and now it's been sitting around kicking back and forth since then so almost 20 years that's ridiculous and wild you know that's a lot to consider that you can get away with medical fraud in america as long as you have friends who have lots of money and have and are well connected a lot of people were affected by that so but not anymore maybe some people will learn from this a lot of people probably won't 